black African power. Welcome to the Destruction of the Black Civilization show, the home of the Amin Ra Squad. What's good? What's happening? A well-organized lie defeats a disorganized truth every time. Woo-hoo. We, man, y'all already know, got a special, special guest in the building. And I know y'all can't guess who it is. It's my man. Real, real cool people. You know what I'm saying? He's coming back and he's back. You can check out his videos on African Truth. Ha, y'all know who I'm talking about. Brother Shaka, here in the building, he's going to come on for a minute, man, and just shout out to the people. Back on the squad, right back at you, letting y'all know, you know, we worked out our differences because that's what African people do. We work out our differences no matter what the circumstances are because in the end, if we don't got each other, we ain't got nothing. So I want to bring him on so I can publicly apologize to the brother like real Africans do. That's what we do. We play hard, we fight hard, and when we find wrong in things we do, it's called my yacht. We just straight up say, I was wrong about this or I was wrong about that. Let me bring my man on. The man that started the super powerful videos. You know when he like zero in on the glyph? And say, this is what they say. He was the one to bring that out like that. He did that. Before that, wasn't doing it. Reading the glyphs and and, 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 and and like pinpointing it, zeroing on the glyphs, taking you to the representative resource and telling you what to say. One of his famous videos was a lie not in the Temple of Atar. I'd never get that one. Yeah. African Truth, make sure y'all go to his website. You know what I'm saying? Check out his information. Let me bring him in. Matter of fact, you know, he done went back and forth with everybody on the squad. But the squad can do that. Shaka, Black African Power, what's good, what's happening, and glad to have you back. What's good, brother? Man, where you at, Shaka? Don't be lying up, bro. Your line is open. Where you at? Man, let me see. Wait a minute. Let me see. No, it ain't my phone. All right, let me see what this is right here. Who is this one one one? Hotel. Oh, that's you. So, what you? What's up, Shaka? Black African Power, brother, uncle, sir. Black African Power, what's the brother? Glad to have you back in the building. I'm a raw squad up, and I'm glad to have you back, brother. What's up with you, Shaka? Oh, they don't even know, man. We've been talking for a while. Like I told the people on my radio broadcast, I don't have no problem with Ankh. That was a while ago. That was like five months ago. But now they know for sure. Yeah, now they know for sure. But let me do the African thing, man, and apologize, man. It was a few issues that me and you was going back and forth with, man. Like, like, like it was stated that the Africans live in a jungle, like, you know what I'm saying? And I kind of supported that. And I'm saying through fair research, through the brother Jonathan Owens, right, he proved that, no, uh, jungles aren't in Africa. There are more jungles in Europe than in Africa. So to make the statement that jungles live in Africa, like, that's not scholarship, or that's not supported by scholarship. And i just like to apologize for that. And I would also like to apologize for calling you the face of scholar. Everybody around here know that's how I get out. I just put a name on you. You're not the faceless scholar. From day one, I guess you've all, no, I'm not going to say I guess. You've always had your picture up, right? I remember back when YouTube started, because you was on there a long time ago, they had your pictures up, you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying I missed that. So that's why I started calling you the faceless scholar, and people kind of ran with that. But no, you're not the faceless scholar, and you showed your face from the beginning. You know, and I apologize, brother, for going back and forth with you. So, I'm, you know, I extended the olive branch, you know what I'm saying, to let everybody know that Shaka is real, real good people. And I'm not going to fault Shaka, right, for going hard 
banging hard for Africa and standing on the square. No matter who didn't like it, he stood on the square for Africa. And in that, I must support, brother. I'm just glad to have you back, and hopefully the people, man, can go get that knowledge and information out of those videos like I did. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, I really appreciate that, man, because, you know, for those who don't know, the videos are there. I usually give the dates. So since this, uh, this is recorded, uh, if they see videos and they hear me going at, you know, you or other people, they can always check out the dates, you know. And uh, I guess he was what he was. Like you said, once people disrespecting Africans in Africa, you know, um, I don't take it lightly at all. So, you know, this uh, this lesson is talking about Africans living in the jungle life, you know, and all that, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't down with that. I think I have the right to disagree, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I agree. You know. It's, it's, all, it's all documented, really, you know. And, uh, was that like Elijah Muhammad? Who said that? Who said that? Was that like Elijah Muhammad or something? It's, it's, who coined it? It's a nation of Islam doctrine, you know, oh. and taught by father, whoever yeah. it was. But, you know, to me, it doesn't matter yeah. if it's a black guy who said that or white dude. Because what's funny, if it's a white Jew who's going to say something about black people, everybody loses their mind. But when black people start talking reckless, you know what I'm saying, you know, all of a sudden they want to give you the pass, you know. Uh, but... It is what it is. Yes, indeed. It's a, it's a nation of Islam lessons. And uh, I disagree with that, you know, period. You know, I just disagree with that, man. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and that's about it. I think I have the right to, you know, people try to make me, people try to make me a, a hater or an agent or whatever because I disagree with those lessons. You know, I disagreed yesterday, I disagree today, and I will disagree tomorrow. You know, that's that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, man, you gotta stand for something or fall fall for any goddamn thing, brother Shaka. You know what I'm saying? And you know we, you know we been back and forth, and it, and it caused a riff on the squad, man. And that should never happen with the squad. You know what I'm saying? We should always be able to handle our differences. You know what I'm saying? And maybe we felt like that should have been handled in the back office, but it didn't, and it was publicly. And, and you know, for that, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? As being a key component. You know what I mean? And you know what I'm saying? That's that's in the past, and the people got to know. That man, you just back. That's just what it is, man. You know, and people got to make sure, man. You you got them serious videos dealing with the the, uh, the and France and the museums, man. Taking the brothers and sisters through that information. That's like some very very important information. And it's just well documented, man. Like 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 people making mistakes. Uh, like Wesley made a mistake calling. Uh, uh, he showed he, he depicted the picture uh, and called them slaves. Right well, when you look at the whole thing, it really wasn't that. It was a misrepresentation. You know which one I'm talking about, Shaka? Yeah, but I mean, you know, this 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 guy Wesley. We all know he he backed down. You know, he 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 publicly challenged me to a debate, then he backed down. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I dealt with these false claims about Black Arabia and the the time period of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, those people in Arabia being black and this Adiyad word meaning black when it means nothing but white. I mean, he's been defeated and defeated many times over again. Uh, so this is not just him showing the the slave. I mean, the alleged slaves when really they were captives of war. The video is called Wesley Muhammad lying. Uh, there's, there's many other instances where he has been disingenuous. So you know, it's not the first time. You know. No, no, I guess, no. I, I, I guess I guess having a PhD gives you a pass, you know what I'm saying? But once again, anybody that speaks Arabic, you know, you ask them what does Abiyad mean, and, you know, if you tell them it means black, they will laugh at you, you know what I'm saying? Today, yesterday, or at the time of Prophet Muhammad, 7th century uh, AD or whatever, you know, you always meant white, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> That's I mean, my brother Rohan, man, he's in the chat, man. I want to greet him. I want to greet everybody. You know what I'm saying? I want to even greet yeah, man. the sister Sutanet. I don't know where she at. I would love to hear from her. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, ain't nobody uh, online. I don't see nobody on the squad on the line yet. Go ahead, though. But like you said, yeah, we went at it. We went at it. It's all documented. You know, we don't really call yeah, we went at each other names. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Disagreement about the Sumerians and stuff like that. You know. 
And, uh, and it, it is what it is, you know. But my main issue mm-hmm. is what that disrespect towards Africa and all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, other than that, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. Man, you know, uh, it's just important, you know, that we that we continue to build alliances, man. And you was always a powerful, powerful piece, man, when it came to information, man. And, you know, we might have our discrepancies in SUMA and back and forth, you know what I'm saying? But actually, that was a lot of good information you brought in SUMA, you know what I'm saying? And then we came back and brought some real powerful, powerful information, which really wasn't going against what you was saying. I mean, it, it's just, you know, when you're in the heat of battle sometime, man, you know, you, people get hit by friendly fire, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? That's why I want to make sure that I step up, man, and, and just, you know, just be an African and, and extend that olive branch out there. It's just important for people to understand that when you deal with the information, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it's in our heart, man. And so we're going to defend our position, and sometimes we defend it past where we should defend it, and then what we de- what we was defending, we find out later on as more information is brought in, that our position really wasn't as strong as we thought it was. I mean, such is life. It's all part of life, man. But what we ne- must never, ever forget, if we stand for Africa, at the end of the day, we can always come back and unite. You know what I'm saying? And in America, we do things a little bit differently. Like, you don't really get a chance to talk to the different brothers on the phone because we get on the phone, we work shit out. You know, in the public sometimes we be enemies, you know what I'm saying? It seems like, you know, but at the end of the day, we can always talk. Like, I could always sit down with Lord Abba do, right? And, you know what I mean, I could always sit down with Yasha Yasharel, you know what I'm saying? And I can always sit down with Minister Inky, Stinky Inky, you know what I'm saying? And I can always <laughs> sit down with <laughs> Ali, <laughs> Ali Baba Muhammad. At the end of the day, you know, and I say this jokingly, but I can at least reach out and sit down and talk to him and talk to him on the phone, yo, and, and, and that's the reality of the situation. But you being so far away, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You could spit that fire, but then you never get a chance to look at us face to face, and we can talk about it and laugh about that shit. So we never really had that with you. You know what I'm saying? But I know I'm glad, I'm glad to have you on that other side, brother, banging for Africa, because I know you're going to bang for Africa at the end of the day, man. And I just know that. And I just appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I, the rest of the brothers ain't on the line right this minute. I don't know where they at. I know we got Brother Son in, in Q. And he's going to be putting down some serious scouts, man. But, yeah, anything you want to say to the people, brother, on the real? Well, well, like you said, you know, uh, Asar and Hotep is about to do a class like you told me. And uh, I'm not going to try to monopolize the time. Uh, I just want to say I, I slightly disagree with what you just said uh, because I actually did speak to uh, Minister Inc. here, you know what I'm saying? Now, uh Abu Dhabi do, I mean we, you know, we all do respect. You know, he, more than once he's been kind of irresponsible. I mean, one of the latest examples is a matter of public record. You know, I'm, I'm not here. You know, slandering or lying is a matter of public record. He said he was going to put Dr. Rekety I mean, to shame. You know, Who's trying to do what? That, uh, he said he was going to put uh, Dr. Rekety I mean, to shame. Uh, Dr. Rekety I mean, has been teaching Medinetta for 20 years. You understand know what I'm saying? And she worked with uh, Sheikh Antadi of that. But who, no matter who she worked with, you know, she has a doctorate degree and she knows the Medinetta. And, and we have Dr. Du talking about Maya means more or whatever. It's going to prove that. And Tamari, uh, you know, they, they play with that MR root word. And yeah. he said he was going to put her to shame. We're still waiting to this day. I mean, at some point, you know, I guess we all make mistakes, but at some point, you know, we can admit, okay, I was wrong about that. And it's not the only thing. There's many other claims, you know, that just don't make sense, really. But this this is one of, the, I mean, for for you to, it's, it's like, let's say I speak Chinese, I, I teach Chinese for 20 years, right? And and you you just open a book of Chinese and you learn a few sentences, and you, 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 you run around talking about, oh, I'm going to put that Chinese teacher to shame. You know, this is really irresponsible. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, <laughs> you mentioned Ali, you mentioned Ali Muhammad. Uh, I never spoke to him. He said this is a matter of public record as well. He said there was no such thing as uh, Kemet. It was a civilization of Moors. That's what he said. 
You know what I'm saying? That's what he said. That's when he came out of his own mind. That was on video. He's on video saying there was no such thing as killing. It was a civilization of wars. I think it's extremely irresponsible. You know, and and also he he showed he showed a depiction of uh, was it King Edward the the Black Prince or whatever it was, one of that British or Scottish king, and he said that was a black mm. dude. You know, at some point, man, you know, but you know, two issues on. <laughs> at some point, the madness have, has to stop. <laughs> we, we have Hebrews talking about. We have we, yes, the madness has to stop. We have Hebrews talking about King James was black. I mean. You know, uh, by the end of the day, you know, as long as we we deal with the facts, with the records, you know, they're not they're not much to argue, you know. But nowadays, you know, people talking about Far Muhammad is is black, the, the the king, the prince of Wales is black, King James is black. I mean, come on now. I don't know. <laughs> hey, man. you know, Prince Charles is black, man. <laughs> Hey, man, we blacking that shit up real quick now to be African, man. Let me open up a saw real quick. Where you at, brother, saw? Black African power. A saw. All right, man. Where the hell Hold on, man. That's crazy. Let me see. Where is he at, man? Let's see if I can get a saw in it real quick, man. We raise your hand and saw when you get a chance, man. And you always disappear. And you you know what, Uncle? There's, there's a, yeah. a video with uh, Dabadu with the imam. The imam said that the people who reject Islam are the worst people on earth. And then here talking about kemetic sciences, the new white supremacy. Who said that? You know what? Uh, what? The Shia? Well, one of the two said that. They were both in agreement. You know, and you know, huh? just 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 for the record, I'm going to share the link in the chat. I'm not trying to start no controversy. They said that. You know, I didn't ask them to say it. They were, they were being filmed, and they said that. The video is, is there, and for those who are going to get to download the video, it's called Kinetic Science is the New White Supremacy with a question mark. So that's what's called in 2014 now. Wow. You know, I guess I guess not many things has changed, you know, <laughs> since the last few years. But, you know, it always comes from the... Uh, like Sanjeri said, the Islamic persuasion. But it is what it is, you know. They have the right to say whatever they want to say. You know? But I never knew Kemetic science was a new white supremacy. I just never knew that. Hold on, let me see what it's. Uh, so, what raise your hand, man. What, what's your number, yo? Hold on, so I'll put in the your regular number. Hold on, so give me a number, man. That ain't the number that you the normal number I hit you with. Let me see. Oh, Skype. All right, hold on. I've seen the Skype. I've seen the damn. Hold on. Hell. You you called on Skype too, Shaka? No, I was trying to, but uh, I didn't find the key. Yeah, Skype. It ain't saying them. I know. I saw. I saw. Yes. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, I, I, I can hear you. The crazy Skype, man. I can hear you, buddy. <laughs> nah. Crazy. Yeah, my, my, my phone may has been going in and out today, so I decided to try to Skype so the, the call won't drop. Okay. All right, brother. All right. Just having a little uh, uh, discourse with Brother Shaka. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, best, Brother Shaka. Been a long time, man. Yeah, man. I had disagreement <laughs> with uh, Osai Motep as well about the Hebrews and Kemet, so I wrote uh, two articles. I even made a video. I was, let's say I was angry or not happy at all when uh, he addressed the uh, Wesley backed it back down, uh, but it's all documented. It's all documented. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I heard Wesley put out a new video or something. Uh, he, he can do what he wants. Either he he cannot change the the meaning of words. You know what I'm saying? Abi Ad means white. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's that's very very interesting, man. Um. Yeah, Shaka, man, I appreciate you coming through, man. I know you're going to be sliding back through, man. Come on, teach the class, man. You know what it is. You know how we get down around here, man. It's good to have you back, man. I'm the raw squad the hell up, man. God damn, bro. You know what I mean? So I'm expecting you to come through more often, man, present your information, brother. And, I mean, we just get more powerful, yo. That's just what that is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no in-between on that. 
You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it, it, it is what it is, man. And so the people, you know, you know, I'm a raw squad. Y'all know what it is. You know, we've spoken. Uh, pretty sure the rest of the brothers want to talk to you. They're just not on the line right now. You know what I'm saying? You're on Ish. You need to get together and talk. Maybe when you call me, uh, I'll call up Ish, man. And everybody just hash out everything. Because I'm letting you know it's important. Separated, we done. Right? If you got African in your heart and you're fighting for that and you're willing to do the work and the due diligence to go to the museums like you have, you know what I'm saying? We make mistakes, but that's okay because we're here. You know what I'm saying? But under no circumstance, you know what I'm saying, will we fight in the public like that again. You know what I'm saying? We'll handle our differences behind the scene and we'll come out fighting for Africa. So anything you want to end on there, Brother Shaka? Well, yeah, just so the people understand, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, I do what I used to say. Uh, I don't argue at fake facts, so I just put in the chat a link. Uh, the video is called Prince of Wales was black, in bracket, Asiatic spook history. So you will, you know, see and hear dude showing the Prince of Wales talking about he was black. Now the video about dude talking about there was no, um, there was no such thing as Kemet. I, I can't even find it, but... It might be in the video more taking Africa and loving gay sex. But I appreciate what you said, and um, I just want to tell people, if they want to support, uh, they already know the deal. The, the channel on YouTube is called Egypt Decoded in One Word. You know what I'm saying? If people want to send donations via PayPal, they are welcome. Uh, the PayPal email address is K-N-T-S-H-A-K-A at MSN.com. That's Kenneth Shaka at MSN.com. And uh, I would have loved to hear from the sister because it's been so long. But, you know, brothers and sisters, keep doing your thing. Stick to the records. You ain't going to be no problem. You all have the right to disagree. Let's try not to call each other names. I think all those years I, I disagree with many people, but if you look at it, you know, I might have nicknames. I, I, I don't remember really insulting people, calling their names, <laughs> you know, disrespecting their mother and father, uh, making anonymous land videos and stuff like that. Uh, everybody handles the situation their own way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's how we do in America, yo. We crush you out tomorrow, yo, and the next day, yo, we all right again, yo. That's how it's just hot. Well, I, never, I, I, America, I, 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 I never heard it. I never heard anybody cursing uh, Dr. Bogdan. I never heard nobody making slender videos. I, you know, I never heard nobody calling him an agent. You know, people called me an agent because they disagree with oh, uh, I get black men that, and, uh, you know, I'm saying... So, but it is what it is. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying for the record. You know, it is what it is. It's all good. Yeah, that's how them, that's how them young cats be getting down, man. I'm a raw squad up. Y'all know what it is. Uh, man, it's been a powerful show. We're going to get right into the questions. Where you at, Brother Shaka? You want to add something, Brother? Yes, thank you. Uh, earlier, I heard a saw saying that uh, Ken doesn't have anything to do with uh, black people or the black land. So... He also mentioned the writing system, people not knowing about the writing system. So I would like to quote Dr. Rekety Amen from a book called The Writing System of Meduneta. And it's actually in the introduction. It's on page 8 of the PDF. And it talks actually about the symbol that stands for the letter K and M. Uh, some people say it's a, it's a crocodile skin. Some people say it's a piece of charcoal. It's just for people to understand what the symbol is. And that's what Dr. Rekiti Amin said. She said, a picture of a piece of burning charcoal was used to write the word Ken. The root Ken signifies carbon or black coal. It is the word for the color black in their language. The country was called Kemet, the black land. The Ken becomes a collective referring to people by putting a picture of people behind, it, behind the charcoal first. Uh, she wrote it in Meduneta, in hieroglyphic, and she says, thus, uh, hieroglyphic means black people, pronounced Kemet you. So I can also quote uh, Gardiner. Uh, I'm going to tell you the page number. It's going to be, it's uh, Egyptian grammar, third edition, revised. And uh, it's uh, on the PDF, is page 275. On the actual book, it is page... Hold on, 238, and for Ken, quoting, yes, uh, we have some Medinetta, 
and the letter, letter says Kem Ur, and the translation says uh, Great Black. Ur means great, and Kem obviously the same as we did in Greek. So this is what I wanted to say. Obviously, uh, my quotes are in disagreement with what Asa said. But he, he might want he might want to add on to that. Okay. Yes. Um again, um I'm I'm gonna be coming out with a book. Actually Aluja Volume Three is gonna be dealing with the word Kemet, Punt in Ethiopia. And I will give the proper breakdown for all three of those terms and hypothesize to the extent of where Punt actually was. That's up uh, that's forthcoming after the uh Aluja Volume 2 that's going to be on God Ra. Now, <laughs> when it comes to the Kemet piece, this is how I, I, I came into the Egyptological debate uh, back in like 2001. Uh, we know that there's two general camps when it comes to the word Kemet. One camp argues that the word Kem means, they, all, they both agree that the word means black, but how the blackness is applied is the source of the debate. So there's the Eurocentric camp that argues that the word Kim uh, in Kemet means uh, black land or black soil. And they attribute it to the flooding of the Nile, which leaves uh, black soil deposits on the banks of the shore. That's the Eurocentric argument. The Afrocentric argument uh, proposed by Shekanti Jok and Theophala Wabinga in the 70s um, was that the word Kim applies to the people And they cite this one glyph um, And to my knowledge It's the only example of the word Kim With people as a determinative uh, in it uh, For those who have the book Great African Thinkers Shekhan Diop, Edited by Ivan Van Sertima, um His discussion on the word Kim is, Starts on page um, hold on one sec. I'm gonna find it. Starts on page 47, and so he's dealing with the. Excuse me. Starts on page 46, and kind of ends on page uh, 48. And so you can go there for check out the joke's argument for uh, him being applied to people, um, and directly from one of his works that was translated from French for the English speakers. Um, uh, especially here in the United States. Um, the problem is that Diop and Obinga, when they were first making these arguments, haven't examined all of the literature um, as a regard to the word itself um, and how it was applied. And so now <laughs> I'm going to read from a book called Ki Baruch Hu. Ancient Near Eastern Biblical and Judaic Studies in Honor of Baruch A. Levine. Um, okay. This is 1999, um, edited by Robert Chazen, William H. Hallow, and Lawrence H. Schiffman. And so the article on which I'm going to be reading from come, is titled, uh, where is it? I mean, I have the page of it. It's called uh, Kemet and Other Egyptian Terms for Their Land. And so this is by Ogden Golet, and he's one of the, the editors who, who finished Gardner's book on the Book of the Dead, that big tall one you see everybody on the Internet with. <clears throat> so sitting here, starting on page 31, it says, one of the most informative uses of the term in this respect in, in, as it regards Kemet uh, in terms of the, the name for the country appears in the Hamamat Graffito of the early, dyna early Dynasty 12 official name Antep. Although the text never specifically contrasts Kemet with the high desert, it shows that the word referred primarily to the Nile Valley as the place where people dwell. Uh, Hamamat uh, 199, Temple, Temple of uh, Amenemhat I. Um, and we scroll down, and he, he cites the the transliteration as, as well with the glyphs. It says, then I, um, excuse me, and this is, uh, you know, from that, uh, from the Wadi Hamamat Graffito. Um, it says, then, and this is on page 32 of o, uh, uh, Ogden's Goliath article. Then I... 
and the entire force descended to the quote unquote black land without there being any retreating of any follower or the death of a great person or a little person. I reaching the black land safely because of my skill in ascending to this place. If you look here, the the, the hieroglyph has the word Kemet with the Kim so-called charcoal glyph, and and it's backwards. So the earliest, the earliest, like if, for people who are on Facebook and they see my book on Kemet and they see that the glyph is backwards, that's because that's how it was written in the earliest days. So the the, the Kim glyph was backwards dealing with the owl glyph and the, the T symbol, um, and then the determinative, again, is the um, the irrigated land determinative. And these are the earliest attestations of the word Kemet, and this lets us know that it has nothing to do with black land or black people, that it has to deal with inhabitable land. And to, and to discuss this, uh, I'll be uh, showing the, the linguistic equivalents all across Africa. But for, an, uh, for a, a more recent discussion, um, I think a year, uh, probably like two years ago or so, I had Dr. Muba Binge Bilolo um, at the University of Houston, and we recorded his lecture there. And it's, um, We have somebody who, who was interpreting from French. Um, he's, a, he's, a speak, he's a French-speaking uh, Egyptologist out of the Congo And um, You know he comes from the African school Studies in Obinga um, But you know he's a, he's a giant In the Af- in, in the um, In the in the world of uh, African centered Egyptology His name is Muba Binge Bilolo And in, in this lecture I, I uploaded it to Facebook Excuse me I uploaded it to YouTube So just look for Bilolo On YouTube And um and I'll try to find it, you know, right now and put it in the chat for, for folks that are there uh, so I can, you know, concentrate and do two things at once. In this lecture, he also talks about how the word Kemet has nothing to do with black people and whatnot, how it has to do with wetland. And he's the one who's, who uh, got me to start doing a lot of linguistic comparisons between the Chiluba Bantu language and the, uh, the ancient Egyptian. And so, you know, like 80% of the vocabulary of ancient Egypt, Middle Egyptian, is found in the Chiluba Bantu language. And so, you know, this is what I've been concentrating my studies on uh, for like, you know, the past 10 years in terms of uh, Bantu and uh, ancient Egyptian. And so uh, mm-hmm. I use the Chiluba language as my control. But, you know, what, who got me there was uh, Dr. Muba Binge Bololo. So we finally had a chance to bring him down. Mm-hmm. Um, to the mm. University of Houston, and he did a lecture, and I have the lecture on YouTube, and he's talking right. about so, let me, as well. All right, let me Go jump ahead. in real fast. So, so basically, you you basing that off of the fact that the earlier glyphs uh, uh, say one thing, but but is it not a fact that from dynasties to dynasties, like a Middle Kingdom, Old Kingdom, that they might not even had understood, meaning, meaning the language kind of changed, and couldn't in fact that. The glyphs that uh, Theophile Banger, she got the glyphs, and the brother that wrote the book uh, Fight for Africa, because he also talks about that and explains the terms of Couldn't it at that point in time mean that, though? Is that a possibility? Um, and then I want I uh, Brother John to jump right in. I, I, I doubt it because of the, the new glyph. And um, I'll be dealing with the new glyph and what that means. Um, <laughs> it, it, again, every, all, the, all the earliest glyphs, you know, um, is based on this concept and association with land. And this is why it is contrasted with the desert, uh, the Westland, um, the, um, the, because it's really the concept of where there's water. That's why the, the earliest sign had the irrigated land determinative. You know, it's, 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 it's used for any land that is, is connected to a river. Matter of fact, in the book that I mentioned earlier by Jean-Claude Emboli, he also makes this argument based on linguistics that it has nothing to do with black land. It has everything to do with a land by which river water connects to it. So the Kemet is 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 basically all of the now all the now valley itself. Okay. You know, it is, well, yeah, it is, Jonathan. It is a hospitable land. All right. Well, yeah, Jonathan. I know you're on mute. Yeah, bro. You at Jonathan? 
Oh, this damn phone drop. All right, let me just go right to the line. You want to add something else, Shaco? Huh? <laughs> well, I, I, I was wondering. I've been in the studio right now. Mm-hmm. Right. I was wondering. Yeah. Go ahead, Shaco. I'm going to go to these lines. Go ahead. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Not necessarily that in later dynasties they would not know the original meaning, but it appears to be clear that when they used the word Kem, it meant black. Now, whether that other scholar argues that um, Kemet doesn't have anything to do with black, I'm wondering what's the position about the root, which is Kem. And I could give an example. Unfortunately, it's in French. There's a word called embrasser, and you have the root for arm, bras. And obviously, at the time, it it meant literally in English, the equivalent would be to embrace. But when mm-hmm. you use it today, it means to kiss. So mm-hmm. it would be a bit like me saying, well, actually, no, embrasser doesn't have anything to do with kissing because back in the day, it meant basically hugging. But you will have to understand French to really know what I'm trying to say. But yeah. I, I, I understand that we have a phrase in English. We have a phrase in English like that, the word believe. The word believe, the root for the word believe means to uh, to reach out and hug. But it has gone through a semantic shift over the time to where people yeah. don't, you know, really understand what it means. But it, it's still, it's, it's used metaphorically, like you're hugging or holding on to an idea. That's what you believe. What are you holding on to? That's what the, that's okay. what the concept, you know, saying comes from. So I understand what you're saying in terms of semantic yeah. shift. But yeah. it's... Uh, from from the evidence from the from the primary evidence that that doesn't seem to be the case again what what is not being part of the normal discourse amongst uh people outside of the linguistics family is this concept called paronymy and so like from for instance in my book Aluja the whole book that's all I'm talking about and discussing and trying to get people to understand how paronymy works because if you understand paronymy, you'll understand that the same word for black can be used to mean something totally different. It's just like the word Ra in um, ancient Egyptian language. There's the word Ra, sun, but then there's a word Ra, God, and spirit in all the African languages. Well, not all, but in a vast you know, uh, number of African languages. The, the, the word Ra, sun, it has nothing to do with, you know, um, the word for God and spirit, but because they sound alike, the ancient Egyptians uh, made some kind of connection and they used it in that fashion. It's the same thing with the word Kim, but it's also the same with, the again, the glyph has nothing to do with charcoal or blackness. It is a foot. It is a hand, the end of a hand. You have the, um, you have the uh, it's a process in linguistics called metathesis. And so when we talk about Tadmehu in terms of uh, lower Egypt, that is a word, the word mech is a word for foot or claw or arm. And one of the things that I'll be talking about in my book on um, Egypt is that the word, the, the, the Egyptian landscape was designed to represent a human body. And lower Egypt is the legs and feet of the body. You had the arms and you had the head. That's what Ethiopia means. Ethiopia means the head. It has nothing to do with burnt black. You will not find in any Greek literature that, you know, they're using this term to refer to burnt skin for burnt-faced people. That's some made-up stuff. And we know who made it up in first and everybody's been rolling with it since the 1800s. But it has nothing to do with Ethiopia. Ethiopia means the head. And mm-hmm. upper Egypt is really right. just the upper body. You know, and stuff like this. And when you understand that, the meta thesis for the word him, meaning foot, is the word mech in Egyptian. And you find all of these reversals and meta thesis. And this is what, you know, I'll be able to show, you know, in, in, in the text. And so there's a, there's a lot that people have to understand linguistically about the language and culturally about the people before they can make this argument. But it has nothing to do with blackness in itself. It's a homonym. And okay. so if you don't know what a homonym is, you know, you, 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 you can't make the you, – you won't know how to not 
you won't know how to prove that it's not a homonym. You know, because there's homonymy, paronymy, none of this enters the layman's mind when when it comes to language. Mm-hmm. And so you you always have these arguments that this means this, this means that, this means because it's the same word. It's not the same word. It's a different word. It's a homonym. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. All right, let me, uh, so, let, let me go to the so, line. Go, go ahead, Shaka, then I'm going to go right to the callers. Go ahead. So, Osa, would you say that Dr. Vekiti Amen, who's been teaching Medunetta for 20 years, is incorrect? On that point, yes. And me and her have okay. had discussions about it. And, again, it's because she, she, she's familiar with a lot of, you know, of course, she's translated Diop's work from English, I mean, from French to English. And she worked with Diop on his parent genetic book. So she was very familiar with a lot of the linguistic arguments. The problem is that she wasn't, you know, aware, or Bingo wasn't aware, and Diop wasn't aware of these earlier texts that has the glyph, you know, in the, um, with, with, the, with the, uh, the irrigated land determinism. Because the argument that Diop was making in the 70s and in the, in the source that I cited earlier is that there's no representation of Kemet with a land determinative. Well, we know that that's not the case. There is, you know, variations with the land determinative. As a matter of fact, it's the first one. And so the argument for that it's representing black people cannot be made here. And matter of fact, that land determinative, is the, the word for it is ta, or teric. The, the capital A is really an L or an R sound. It's the same, it's the same root that we get for a teric. In, in the Latin languages, meaning earth. Mm. And so, you know, regardless to what, this is why, this is why I say demonstration beats conversation any day. Regardless to how many sources you got, it's all about can you go to the primary text and withdraw from the primary text. So once we go to these primary texts, when we go to the, uh, the, Hama, the Wadi Hama Mama text and, and show the, the, the glyph, the argument's done. There's no more argument after that. You cannot make that argument anymore because the primary text says otherwise. Mm. And so we have to think about it differently. We can't use that. It's just like with the Dr. Ben thing. We can't use Dr. Ben's, you know, say an argument that we came from the foothills of the mountain of the moon because it wasn't there. We we just have to adjust. Yeah, there's other there's other ways that we just can just because you know, we come from there, huh? Egyptian. Yeah. Just because but we right, come from there, though. There's a recent um, brother who uh, out of New York who did a presentation at the ASCAT conference who who said that, you know, who was arguing that, well, Dr. Ben was right. He just had the wrong text and that yeah, you have to examine that. the famine stealer, you mm-hmm. know. And so, you the know. What? Uh, Kirk, yeah, hold on, examine the what? Famine, the what? The famine stealer. Okay. Interesting. And so it doesn't have that exact wording that Dr. Ben says, but it says it in a way that you could word it the way that Dr. Ben said it. And so when they're talking about their the ancestors, famine? the Who famine stealer. Hmm. And so... Um, All right. <laughs> famine stealer. Okay. All and right. so this is what I mean, like, when, when it comes to when it comes to, this is why it's important to learn these, these concepts in which I was speaking on earlier. You can have information that is valid for today, but tomorrow somebody can discover something that makes that position invalid today. And so you always, as a scientist, have to be willing to adjust, you know, your, your position based on new information. You know, um, of course, you know, skepticism is a, is, is, is a part of the culture of science. But when presented with the unrefutable evidence, you have to change positions as a as a as a means as a uh, as an issue of integrity. You know, instead of constantly trying to fight it or skim around it. Mm. You know? Interesting. And so, all right, let me but, you know, let, so, let me just give these, these calls real quick, man. All right. I, should, I have a question for Saul. All right. All right. Yeah, brother, so we spoke about that. Well, actually, I don't even remember if he was talking to Aunt back then. But I had a disagreement with that. You said that Allah is in the Egyptian text. Do you still maintain mm-hmm. that? Yes, I do. So can you explain how it is so? 
again, this is a linguistic argument. Now, if you're trying to ask me the question as it regards to Allah as it is understood by the Arabs of 632 A.D., no. Mm. If we're talking about the word Allah in the Egyptian records, it is there. It's there in two ways. It's actually uh, a product of metathesis in the word Heru. Um, and also just words for elevation. This is one thing we got to understand about words for God. Words for God are based on common everyday words. Mm-hmm. In modern times, we have this notion of a quote unquote proper noun. Back in the day, there was no proper noun in that sense. The everyday words were used in the the mythologies or as descriptors for the divine. So a word for sky is the word for God. The word for up or the word for head is the word for God in many um, respects. The word for light and the word for spirit has a correlation in some languages, you know, um, or a word for big, you know, so to speak. You know, like uh, in Chiluba they say muneme. You know the 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 very great one, the great great one. It's a reduplication. It's just a word for great. And so, you, if you spoke the language, you would recognize the word "great" in the word for the divine or the name for the divine. <laughs> hey, and so, but... these common these common words are just everyday words. It's just a word for up or sky. That's the argument. That's the argument I made in Aluja in terms of the word for um, Allah. Hmm. Found all over. It's found all over Africa. It's the same word for El and, and stuff in the Hebrews, but we have the same word in Yoruba. So when I say Elegba, when I'm talking about Eshu in the Yoruba tradition, that El is the word Allah. When I talk about Olu and Oluwa and Olodumare, it's the same root, it's the same word. These words exist in ancient Egypt. And so the word Allah, or the root for the word Allah, is in Egyptian. Now, the perception of the divine as understood by the Arabs of the six, uh, six, uh, 632 A.D., that's a totally different <laughs> argument. I'm not making that argument. <laughs> okay. So, so, I mean, that's a good one. You know, do you agree, Asa, that Allah comes from the combination of al Ilah, literally meaning the God? <laughs> um, I know the folk etymology. And, again, the word, the root, would still be L. Which really is and, il, I-L? No, the, we know the Al in, in, as far as the definitive argument, the God, but it's Ila, is the root that they argue for the uh, proto-Semitic reconstruction. And it comes in two forms. It comes as a glottal stop in L, and the glottal stop in L and H as a triliteral. And so those two forms have supposedly been reconstructed for proto-Semitic. The glottal stop is a weakened consonant. It's it, 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 it's a consonant in the Semitic languages, but it's really a weakened consonant. That means that there it was a it was a stop before then. It was a, it was a plosive before then. That's why I'm saying that their root is Heru. The root for um, for Allah is the same root for Heru. That H or K sound became the glottal stop in Semitic for this word. So you say Allah. It's almost like um, in English, in, in the hood, we don't say something sometimes. We say something. Like, you know, like Maxwell's song, son and son. Some people just say son and son and, you know, eh, that uh is a glottal stop. It's a sound that is, is almost made in the throat. It just stops right above the glottis. But it's it's an actual consonant in, in respective words. And so this, this same con in in Chiluba Bantu they don't say Heru, we say Kulu. It's a K sound. And so and throughout the years going down to Semitic, this became a glottal stop with a parasitic H at the end in terms of Allah. Some may argue that it's an old feminine fossilized, you know, who knows. But that H is parasitic. That's not part of the root. 
It is is the glottal stop and L sound. So you so say so. that heading became ila. No, the root, the root, the head root, the W you we know is the suffix because you could just say her in Egyptian as far as uh, head for top or sky. Yes. I'm just saying Heru because everybody's familiar with Heru, the deity. Mm-hmm. But it's just a word for sky or up. And again, it's just for for many for many world languages. This is just the world. This has this this is not specifically an African thing or nothing. The word for God is associated with the word for sky. Mm-hmm. And or up, and, and so we're we're dealing with it's 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 used as a metaphor. It's a, it's an extended metaphor. So when we're talking about you know, so something that is tall or up, we're saying exalted, the exalted one, the one who is high up. In terms a king, of like you said, an elder. So yeah, you, an elder, so, so that's someone who was talking about the king, elder. Mm-hmm. You know, be the father, and and the reason mm-hmm. why I associated with the sky. Um, if you're familiar, mm-hmm. um, I, I wrote an article um, yeah, debating yeah. Wesley Muhammad's position on that Allah comes from Arabia, you know, uh, excuse me, that the word Ra Ra is Allah coming from Arabia, uh, from some Semites. (laughs) And so, you know, using his own text, I, I, to, you know, to my understanding, I I think I proved that the the God Allah is more so associated with rain in the sky, looking at all (laughs) of the old texts. So, 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 hold on, so, a so what you trying to, so what you trying to say is, is that some go herders took took a word for sky up or rain and start bowing down praying to him. Boy, I tell you, boy, let me. <laughs> but it would be no different than any of the other Africans, because all I of them, like part. I quoted. Um, hold on one sec. I'm gonna quote uh, John S. and Bitty if I can find it. Um, Real quick, but that ain't you know, the I, point. I but that, that's not the point I'm making. Hold on, that's not the point I'm making. Uh, I'm saying it's funny because they would never accept that. That's the point I'm making. We 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 know what yeah. Africans did, but they would never accept yeah. that, that 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 rain to be so vital like we would as Africans, or that tree, or that yeah. upper, or that sky. They would never accept that. They would like as a word they use for you, you speak or something crazy like like you're a pagan, like you bound down to the rain of the tree. They they would say that yeah. across the board, but yet they do to themselves, right? And and then enslave yeah. you based off of that. That's why I say it is impossible to practice myotic Islam or understand Islam through myot or or like they say myotic Islam. That's an oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? Like like, like for your God to live, my God must die. You know what I'm saying? Like for a lot to exist, you got to destroy all the rest of the religions. I mean, that's what it's based off of. That's not in my yacht. Bananas. Let me hold on. I got to get the call, man. We... Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Brother, I ain't trying to be smart. Man, yeah, man, you good? We, we should all try to say my yacht, not my yacht, because people want to, you know, it's like the way you put the way when people say my yacht, it's as if there was a, a Y. It's my yacht. <laughs> My act. How about mm-hmm. Matt? I heard how about Matt. How about that? All of that is wrong. Oh, oh man, there you go with that. So <laughs> hold on, man. <laughs> how about we ain't gonna do it? Let me get this call. Hold on, let me see. Hold on. How about all that is wrong? What is it, real quick, or so? Go ahead. It is. It would be Malungu. It would be Malungu. The the arm glyph is not a a stop. It is a K velar sound, and the the because uh, when you when you transliterate mod, we transliterate it as M lowercase M capital A lowercase A dot T. That that uppercase A is really an L or an R sound. The lowercase A is really a K sound, and I have all the correspondences to demonstrate and prove this. And this is going to be uh, part of the argument in terms of further demonstrating that Allah did not come from Semites because they didn't pronounce Ra as Ra, as Ra as Rek, or Rungu, Ilungu, Malungu, Marungu. Uh-huh. That's, that's the name of Ra in Central Africa all around. They still preserve mm-hmm. the uh, ancient, archaic way of pronouncing the word. Um, and the same thing with Ma'at. In, in, in Kikongo, it's Ilungu, Ilunga. And it, it preserves 
the 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 archaic pronunciation. And as uh, Jean Emboli has demonstrated, for instance, you know, uh, people have been trying to use Coptic to uh, demonstrate and pronounce uh, Middle Egyptian, and you can't do that. Coptic is a totally separate language. They'll argue that Coptic is a different or the last quote unquote stage of Egyptian. That's not the case. You know, as the linguistics comes uh, comes out in, in, in um, demonstrating the Negro Egyptian language phylum, um, Coptic is a totally separate language from Middle Egyptian. And Middle Egyptian, you know, the words again is is more akin to Bantu than it is to Coptic. And Bantu and Coptic, you know, saying are different branches, you know, saying of the Negro Egyptian phylum. And so it's it's a matter of this is what I mean, like. You know, when you approach ancient Egyptian, just knowing how to read the glyphs ain't enough because the way that you're reading the glyphs is based upon how the Europeans have uh, understood it down the years. But the whole, the African mm-hmm. school has given us a method for in, in, interpreting the words. And I've discovered, you know, saying through some other studies, the proper pronunciation, at least for the arm glyph, Dr. Alan Anselin, you know, I think was one of the first ones to bring out that the vulture glyph was actually an R L sound. And so he did all the demonstration in his work. His stuff is mainly in French. And so, you know, because a lot of us don't read, uh, we we can't read French, um, you know, we're we're barred from a lot of this information, you know. Uh, but, you know, I'm right. up on it. And, and so, you know, but, yeah, my right. is not how you pronounce it. They never pronounced it my. You know, Asa, that's right. Asa, you know, Asa, it's strange uh-huh. because, once again, Dr. Recti, I mean, who, I mean, I just said for the record, she holds a PhD and she's been teaching Medineta for 20 years. <laughs> she wrote in her book that um, Coptic is the final, final stage of Medineta. I understand. Of, she's, going off of, uh, she's going off of what she learned at the... Uh, at the Oriental School of Egyptology in Chicago. Okay. But then again. But now there's oh, new information. <laughs> there's new information done by linguists which will tell you and which you can demonstrate which you have to understand linguistics to understand that Coptic is not the last stage of Egyptian. These in matter of fact, Riketi Amin talks about uh the the them being like at least Middle Egyptian and New Kingdom being totally different languages. And she talks about this, um, and I have all of this. I've written an article uh, called Egypt in its African Context, Note 3, and I cite Riketi where she's talking about this. But the the main source for that argument is in Kemet and the African Worldview, Research, Rescue, and Restoration, edited by Milana Karanga and Jacob Carruthers. She has an article in here talking about this and talking about the the different quote unquote stages, which in essence may be different dialects or languages. And now, and that was written in the eighties. That's like eighty six. And so, John mm-hmm. Mboli's work is two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. And so, okay, you know, upgrade. again, you have to stay up upgrade on. I will upgrade. upgrade. Yeah. Let me. Let me <laughs> I, 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 just, I didn't make my point. I didn't get to, to make my point. I, I'm just going to try to be brief. I understand okay. linguistics. I don't call myself a linguist, but I think sometimes maybe people are hustling backwards uh, because uh, one example is the, 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 the name Mamadou. Mamadou is an African way of saying Muhammad, you know. So the original, so to speak, is Muhammad. It's like me saying, oh, no, Mamadou is he, trying to demonstrate uh, an African relation to, to the word. Because if I was to ask you, sir, out of all the Egyptologists in the world, how many are saying, like you are saying, that Ma'at is correctly pronounced Mulugu? <laughs> None, because this is my discovery. And so when I come out with the text, then the world would have to contend. See, this is, again, what did I say? A researcher is somebody who brings about new information. Mm-hmm. An enthusiast just reads and recites and regurgitates what everybody has done in the past. And so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. telling you as a researcher that, you know, I have the demonstrable proof that it was not pronounced my eye. And I can go into living languages where they are pronouncing it with these meanings, truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, as the word lungu. The M is a prefix on the root. 
and we can demonstrate mm-hmm. that in the uh, in the <coughs> and in other African languages. That is coming out probably this fall in terms of that information. But I have an article, uh, Dr. Mubai Binge Bololo and um, because uh, uh, I've, I've written an article for uh, this French publication. Mine's going to be the only one in English. But my but the article I submitted for this publication that is coming out uh, in honor of this uh, this African philosopher is going to be on my eye. So that's my preliminary uh, work. And I don't know when that is coming out specifically. Um, I submitted the article last year sometime, and so they're still editing it, um, so to speak. Um, and I can hey um, no 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 oh hold on, hold on, hold on. let me get these calls they they screaming at me yo hold on, yo I, okay. I got you, I got your point shock I hear you so you you answer that a song you by yourself nobody but just because there's nobody <laughs> let me remind you just because there's nobody done it right does not mean it's wrong 